number 12 says be able to calculate the enthalpy change for a process using either heats of formation or bond enthalpy values. Know the difference between the two techniques and which yields more accurate values. Find the enthalpy change for the combustion of butane, C4H10, using both heats of formation values given below and bond enthalpies from table 11. Compare both values to the accepted literature value for the heat of combustion of negative 2878. So when you look at the heats of formation here, you see butane is given as a gas, CO2 is given as a gas, but water is given as a liquid. So um, right away, I'm have an issue with my bond enthalpy because those assume everything's a gas and this is letting me know this equation this process usually produces liquid gas but I'm going to go ahead and write my balanced equation C4H10 plus O2 will yield CO2 plus H2O and gas uh, states of matter here are important as we're using these values and then when I balance this I'll need a 4 here and a 5 here, which means I need 13 oxygen, or 13 halves, 13.5, um, or I'm sorry, 6.5, or 13 halves, whichever way you want to think of it. And so now when I plug in my heats of formation, it's going to be products minus reactants when I do this, because I'm looking at it from the product side of things, how much heat is released during the bond making. So I've got... 4 times my CO2 value of negative 393.5 plus I've got 5 times my H value of negative 285.8 minus just the 1 uh, mole negative 125.6 plus 0 for the heat of formation of oxygen. So if I find my calculator here I go ahead and punch this in, and I get a value of negative 2877.4, and that would be kilojoules per mole of butane, which is pretty darn close to the 2878. When I do bond enthalpies, the story is going to be a little different. Let me see if I can find some room here for bond enthalpies. I'll squeeze bond enthalpies on top because of the way this scrolls, but that's okay. So with my bond enthalpies, I'm using the same equation, but now I have to draw what this looks like. So C4, all four would bond together. The hydrogens, I'm just going to use the bonds here and know that each one represents a hydrogen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So alkanes being saturated like we expect. So that means I have one, two, I have three carbon-carbon single bonds, plus I have 10 carbon-hydrogen bonds. The O2 is going to be double bonded to itself. So now the bond counts when I'm doing bond enthalpies. And on the other side then, I'm going to have, I'm going to subtract the reactants minus the products. So when I find these bond enthalpies, I'll subtract the CO2 each carbon dioxide's got two of these CO double bonds, and I've got four of them, so we're really talking eight carbon-oxygen double bonds. And with the H2O, again, I've got two OH bonds in each, but I've got a total of five water molecules, so 10 OH bonds. And if I grab my booklet and look on page 11 and table 11, For my values, I find carbon-carbon single bond is 346. The carbon-hydrogen bond is 414. The oxygen double bond to itself is 498. The carbon-oxygen double bond is 804. And finally, my OH bond, and again, this is going to be where I have some discrepancy because it's assuming it's a gas, not a liquid, is 463. So now if I go ahead and 
crunch these numbers. And I come up with a value of negative 5386 kilojoules per mole. And as we can see, um, that's quite a, quite a bit different than the 2877 expected. In fact, in this case, it's quite a bit higher than what we'd expect. And part of that is because the water is a liquid instead of a gas. And part of it is because we're using average value. So why would you ever use bond enthalpies? Because sometimes it's the only option you have.